let g be a group and x an element of g, we are going to prove that the order of x is equal to the order of x inverse. Proof. Let's do it in cases. So case one, this will be the case where x has finite order. So x has finite order. So since x has finite order, let's go ahead and let n be equal to the order of x. Well then, this means that x to the n is equal to the identity. The natural thing to do now is look at x inverse to the nth power. So then, x inverse to the nth power we can write this as x to the negative n, and this can be written as x to the n to the negative 1. x to the n is e, so this is e to the negative 1, and this is equal to e. So we started with x being an element of finite order, and we showed that x inverse to the n is equal to e. So we showed that if the order of x is finite, two things happen. One, the order of the inverse of x is finite. And two, the order of the inverse of x is less than or equal to the order of x which is equal to n. And this works for any x that has finite order. So now, because x inverse has finite order, apply the above to x inverse. So that means that the order of x inverse inverse is less than or equal to the order of x inverse, right? Using this inequality here. But this is just the order of x less than or equal to the order of x inverse. So now we have both inequalities. And so this shows that the order of x is equal to the order of x inverse. So that takes care of the case where x has finite order. It's a really careful proof. Case two, x has infinite order. So the claim here, we claim that if x has infinite order, that x inverse also has infinite order. But we're basically done. Why? This is the contrapositive. Contrapositive of the statement that the order of x inverse has finite order implies that the order of x has finite order. But we already showed this. But we already showed this. So this proof requires um, a lot of, of really, really careful thought. I hope this helps.